look behind the scenes with one of Louisville's top chefs who's also a farmer. It's going to be a busy day in the garden. Polari chef Josh Moore is taking us home with him, giving us an up-close look at the secret to what makes Volari different than all the other restaurants in town. Fresh ingredients that are homegrown, harvested, and prepared, all by the same man. You've heard of farm to table, but this time the table is actually on the farm. Come with us to the home, the farm, and the kitchen of Volari chef Josh Moore. More laid back and fun here at home. It's a meal to remember right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. It does make a difference. There's no question about it. Tim Laird with you for another edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're on the farm. And it's not just any farm, it's actually a big secret behind the success of one of Louisville's finest restaurants. Bellari. Most of what you eat at the restaurant comes from here, Taylorsville, Kentucky, home of and farm of Chef Josh Moore. Everybody tries to be farm to table, but you know my thing is it's my farm to my table. Chef Josh is the driving force behind Bellari's success. He started in the business at the age of 14 at Vincenzo's. Now he's making his own mark on Italian fine dining. Volari's Carpaccio is rated as best of Louisville. The pasta is made from scratch and Josh's desserts are second to none, garnished with handcrafted sugar art. But there's more to this story than just the cooking. The fine dining experience at Volari actually begins long before the chef ever fires up that first saute pan. In fact, the work starts months before the ingredients are even grown. It is a dirty job. 35 miles away from Valari's dining room on Frankfurt Avenue, this is where your meal really begins. It, in Taylorsville, Kentucky, a few miles from uh, Taylorsville Lake. In the springtime, Chef Josh turns into Farmer Josh, planning and planting. We're, we're a week after Derby, putting out 400 tomato plants, uh, seed for corn, different kinds of beans, white onions, red onions, fingerling potatoes and Yukon gold potatoes. Dozens of different crops go into the ground with a little help from Josh's friends, most of whom work in the kitchen at Valari. Cameron's handing me plants, I'm measuring out five foot with a stick. Joel's getting them planted in the ground. Down at the other end, we've got Robert and Matt. They're getting in uh, yellow bell peppers right now. Um, a lot of the guys come out, you know, every weekend, every other weekend during the summer and help plant and till and uh, weed and harvest, some beer drinking and we grill out steaks and have bonfires and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good time. And he has another good helper who's not doing any beer drinking just yet. Uh, Gibson, my son, he's uh, four years old, loves getting out here playing in, the, playing in the mud and dirt. He does a little bit of helping. He has a lot of fun. Fun for Gibson, hard work for Josh. He's planting and organizing what seems like an entire produce department in his backyard. Putting out uh, squash, zucchini, about eight different varieties of bell peppers, habaneros, jalapenos, uh, some broccolini, Romanesco plants that we started inside from seed, celery act that we started inside from seed. So normally the Sunday, Monday after Derby, I get all of that in the ground. Also have about 50 fruit trees in an orchard, berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, gold raspberries, um, black raspberries. We can see where the um, flower of the blueberry bush came out. And then from that flower, is each one of these is a little blueberry. This is a little green blueberry. So this actually grow into a mature blueberry fruit. The work is a little easier now that Josh's tractor is up and running. It's a 1954 to 8N. Actually, uh, the restaurant took it this winter and had it restored a little bit. New track, new uh, tires and rims, and engine rebuilt, so it's running much better. And that's not the only classic hiding out in this old barn. Oh, wow. We'll uncover that shiny little secret coming up. And how's this for extra help on the farm? It's literally buzzing with workers. Worker bees, that is. The bees are certainly getting the job done. 100 days later, wait until you see what's coming out of the garden. It's good in there. Next, we go from farm to table as Chef Josh Moore gets cooking. 
potatoes, tomatoes, and a whole lot more. Oh, I can't wait to see this. It's a special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs on the farm with Chef Josh Moore. And we'll be back right after this. Tim Laird back with you again with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, the show that takes you inside the kitchens of your favorite local restaurants. But this time, it's a little different. Instead of the kitchen, we're taking you all the way back to the farm. In this case, the farmer is actually the chef and one of the best in the bluegrass. He's Josh Moore of Louisville's Valari on Frankfurt Avenue, and he does more than cook with local ingredients. He actually grows them, too. You work as a full-time chef there. You do some uh, many other great things for the community, and then you garden. And Actually, this is more than a garden. This, this is a farm. Josh's farm is ripe with just about everything you could imagine eating. You know what, Josh? I'll tell you what. It's a little warmer out here, but it's a lot more fun than just shopping in a produce section of a store where I'm taking my little cart going up and down the aisle. <laughs> this is the real thing. I mean, here it is. So we're actually going to harvest that. Yeah, that right? yeah, yeah. Let's, let's well, harvest. Let's do. And then uh, we'll, 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 we'll cook our harvest. First stop, the orchard full of fresh fruit and berries. We have blueberry plants over here. Um, a lot of ripe blueberries right now. It's a very, very tedious job. Oh yeah, we can we can pick some blueberries, do something with. You're right. It is kind of tedious, isn't it? Oh, Going yeah. it, digging down in there, getting the ones that are just we right. Spend a lot of hours picking blueberries. Oh yeah, I mean you can tell how beautiful that looks. It's a good thing I brought a basket here because we're going to fill this thing up. Wow, this must be the blackberry uh, patch over here. I mean these look absolutely fabulous. This year, this has been the best blackberry crop. We've had yet over the years. I see a great dessert. There's just something about picking it right off the vine, tasting it. Oh, they're, they're much incredible. better too. If, if they ripen on the vine, you pick them right when they're ready instead of them getting picked early and sitting around. And it does make a difference. There's no question about it. Night and day difference. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> so good. Where do you want to head next to out of the farm here? Uh, let's head out to the garden next. Very good. Months of hard work has paid off in the garden. Everything's coming up from cucumbers to cabbage. A good looking head of cabbage. Perfect, that, that looks good. I should have brought the shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's grab some Swiss chard too. This is the, uh, the rainbow light Swiss chard, so it's very colorful. Beautiful on the plate. Great. Beautiful. That is great. We can go, we can go throw these in the wheelbarrow right. and pull some onions up. Something as simple as an onion, ones that you grow versus the ones that you buy, the flavor is just night and day difference. It's uh, It really is amazing. We're going to pick a few of these for our salad. And there they are, just right out of the ground. Right out of the just ground. Just like that. And you know, very, very easy to grow. And you know where everything is. Usually at the home gardeners, they had those little sticks. Oh sticks yeah, little in the ground sticks, yeah. with a little picture of everything. <laughs> you, you just know it, don't you? When you're when you're out here every day, you, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be hard to forget where anything is. <laughs> so Josh, we even have uh, potatoes over here. What kind are these? Yes, uh, this row is Yukon Golds. We have uh, rose fingerlings over here behind us. We're gonna do Yukon Golds tonight for what we're preparing. Easy. Here they are. So they are just right out of the ground. And that's why they call it a root vegetable, right? <laughs> so that's the little seed potato that I planted, and then all those little potatoes grow around it. How about those potatoes? <laughs> so being an Italian restaurant, this is probably the cornerstone of the garden, tomatoes. It absolutely is, absolutely is. And the most work of the garden. Heirlooms yeah, about, about, about 25 different varieties of heirlooms. So and you, and you can see they are loaded down right now with tomatoes just starting to turn. Couple weeks, we get some warm weather, and it's going to be 50 to 100 pounds a day. Great! Off to fresh tomatoes and sauces. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> some for our tomato salad. These little yellow pear varieties are nice. Yeah, Tim, we'll go ahead and pull a couple cucumbers. Beautiful. For our salad. Incorporate that into the salad. That looks yes, great. 
Very nice. Look at those. Pretty much a good bounty there. The bounty gets a quick washing outside and then another inside in Josh's kitchen, which looks a lot like an industrial kitchen with a huge sink, stainless steel backsplash, and a commercial range. By the way, Chef, I know you don't invite a lot of people in here, and I can see why. It's a little unnerving uh, being back here. <laughs> All right, Chef, we uh, picked everything out of the garden, so tell me what you're going to prepare. All right, well, we're going to start off our appetizer. We're going to do some fried green tomatoes, a little bit of uh, cornmeal, breadcrumbs, a little panko. Going to pan fry those. First order of business, the fried green tomatoes. Fresh out of the garden, Josh slices them up and puts me on the job of breading. So we're Fresh just going to drop them in the flour a little bit, make sure we yeah, shake, take shake off, off all that episodes. flour. Then it's right into the egg wash. Egg wash, just eggs and half and half. And then in here with the breadcrumbs, we have a little cornmeal, some panko, parmesan, Not fresh good. basil, fresh parsley. Oh, I can't wait to see this. From here, it's easy. The tomatoes take a dip in hot oil until they're perfectly golden brown on both sides. You don't need the timer or anything else. It's golden on both sides yeah. and you're done. That is golden brown. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. I can look at that and just hear the crunch. And then the tomatoes meet up with Josh's secret sauce. It's uh, aioli, mayonnaise base, okay. buttermilk, tarragon capers, red onions, um, cayenne pepper. Wow. So it's got, got a little bit of heat to it. He's also made a farm fresh relish with corn and fresh peppers that were also picked just minutes ago. Just a nice little appetizer, two tomatoes per person. Perfect. We'll shingle our tomatoes. Fresh a little corn. Corn, banana pepper, red onion relish, just talking about. Nice little. It's more little crunch on top. Yeah. yeah. Got our buttermilk, buttermilk aioli. Get that with a little bit of microgreens. And for yet another taste of the garden, Josh drizzles the plate with a touch of basil-infused olive oil. Right from the farm to the table to the mouth, soon. <laughs> All right, Chef, as you know, we always got to taste this. Oh, I, yeah. I, I can't wait. Wow. I'm telling you, there is a huge difference when it came right from that farm to over here. And there is a big, big difference. In, you get spoiled now. Yeah. You don't want it any other That's way. Good. And not only did we get green tomatoes, but we got this wonderful collection of heirloom tomatoes, some grape tomatoes, some mm -hmm. all these other wonderful tomatoes. What are you going to do with these guys? Uh, I have the tomatoes all diced up. Also have in the bottom of the bowl the onions and the cucumbers that we just harvested out of the garden. I uh, have a red wine vinaigrette I make at the restaurant, Dijon mustard, fresh herbs, red wine vinegar, balsamic, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Perfect. So we're going to pour that over top. And feta cheese. And feta cheese, that's going to be a nice combination. Is there, you know, mm -hmm. any bigger cheese would co probably compete with the tomatoes, but this would yeah, be a nice feta, combination. Feta's, feta or fresh mozz. Those okay. are the, the two I prefer. And we have some basil that we pulled out there. I love the smell of basil just picked oh, out of the garden. Right out of the garden. A little chiffonade going on, and, and that's perfect. This is a salad that I run all summer long when I'm bringing my heirloom tomatoes in as a special at the restaurant. Guests love it. I mean, again, there's such a big difference from that farm-raised tomato. Oh, yeah. Now that's seed to table, and we're just getting started. Stick around for steak, potatoes, and a farm-fresh dessert that's made easy to do at home. And I'll put some of our harvest to use in a cocktail. And there's another hidden treasure hiding on Josh Moore's farm. Be one of the few to feast your eyes on this hidden gem when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, it's farm to table with one of Kentucky's best chefs. He's Josh Moore, the head of the kitchen at Volari, which is famous for impeccable Italian food. And in true style of Italian cooking, most everything he serves is locally grown. Now, Josh, when you say farm to table, you really mean 
your farm to your table. Oh, right? yeah. Not only is Josh a top chef, he also gets down and dirty on the farm. He plants it, picks it, and then cooks it. To be able to, you know, grow it, see it every day, take care of it, nurture it, dig it up, prepare it, it's just, it's very rewarding. There, there's nothing like coming out, seeing what's ripe and ready, picking it, taking it to the restaurant right away. It's not refrigerated, it doesn't sit around. Growing his own ingredients is one of the secrets to Valari's incomparable meals, as well as Josh's polished technique in the kitchen. He also has some other secrets in this old barn. Oh. Wow. When he's not cooking or farming, you might catch a glimpse of Chef Josh cruising around town in this. 1950 Chevy, all original. There it is, original. Yeah, it's never been restored. Only drive a couple times a year, get it out, clean it up. I'm, I'm telling you, Josh, you have a lot of <laughs> great things on this farm. <laughs> From 1950 Chevy to beautiful tractor to incredible fruits and vegetables. Time Let us know the next time you take this out. We want to be part of that we'll do. tour. We'll oh, do. <laughs> We're coming back to the farm. <laughs> this is beautiful. As nice as the car looks, Josh quickly diverts my attention with something just as bold. Check these out. 36 ounce certified Angus beef tomahawk steaks. Josh, here they are. The giant certified Angus uh, beef steaks. What do we do here? Uh, I'm a real purist when it comes to beef and bourbon. For my beef, I'm, I'm always simple, just extra virgin olive oil, a little salt and pepper. That's Rub it. them down, throw them on the grill, and then we'll finish them with a nice little compound butter at the end. Perfect. Chef, it's off to the grill. Here we go. Let's do it. You know, we were talking about how uh, how you like the uh, meats done, and you say different cuts, different styles. Mm -hmm. You know, with the filet, you like it a little bit more uh, rare. Yeah. And, and then, but with this one, yeah, ri ribeye. You know, just the all, all the fat and all the marbling. You know, I, I'm more like a medium rare. But, you bet. You know, a, a strip, a filet, something that's real lean. More rare, the better. To go with our massive tomahawk steaks, Josh will put some of the cabbage he just pulled out of the garden to use. Since it's so fresh, all it takes is a little chopping and seasoning. He wraps it in foil and gets that on the grill too. Same thing with the potatoes we just harvested. They are washed off, cut up, seasoned with farm fresh herbs and butter, wrapped up, and then off to the grill. And we have in this pan over here, we're gonna make a little cream Swiss chard with applewood bacon, heavy cream. Oh, of course. A little Parmesan, it's gonna be delicious. I'll tell you, when I walked in the door, I could smell that applewood bacon and it was just incredible through the entire house. <laughs> I mean, oh. Here's the other secret to the Swiss chard, a healthy dose of heavy cream. So that goes in on the end? Yeah, a little, little cream at the end. We're gonna cook this down some more. Um, add a little bit of Parmesan. Beautiful. A big dinner is just around the corner, but Josh isn't stopping there. Remember that basket full of berries? What are we gonna do with all these great fresh berries that we just picked? I'm gonna make a grappa and duck egg custard. And I love these, look at these duck eggs. Now tell me where you source these. They have a nice blue hint to it. Yeah, they, they, they come from my dad's farm in uh, Shelbyville. It's all farm fresh eggs. If I can't grow it myself, I still try to use a lot of local Kentucky food. That is great, including your dad. Absolutely. Which is wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. The custard will go into tart shells, and just like everything else, Josh makes them from scratch. Of course, made in house, little sable dough, little removable bottom tart pans. Tim, if, if you want to fill those with blackberries. Sure. This is great. I mean, these fresh berries, I mean, just. Just when we were tasting them, Josh, right off the vine, it was just incredible. There's such a difference. Uh, you know, these berries actually getting to have the chance to ripen on the vine and not ripen, you know, in a in a container, in a refrigerator. That uh, just amazing how much sweeter they are. I'm gonna go ahead and get our duck egg yolks in our bowl. Those are nice size eggs too. About Two chicken eggs is what a duck egg. All right, so we, again, at home, if you don't have the duck eggs, uh, you can use the chicken eggs. But two of them, two okay. or one. We're gonna add our sugar. Okay. Granulated sugar. We're gonna add cornstarch. Salt. 
and vanilla bean. It's huge, huge difference between the vanilla extract and beans, although you can use the extract at home. Not when you're on the Moore farm. Nothing, get, no corners are cut here. Nothing. We're gonna add heavy cream to this. Of course, because it's a dessert. We gotta add Absolutely. heavy cream. Uh, here, I love this next ingredient yes, that's coming uh, in there. Grappa, one of my one of my favorites. I love it. You know what they used to say? What's I love that? my mama, love my papa, but most of all, I love my grappa. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Anyway, so the custard is all mixed up, the grappa's in there, and we go into the uh, little tart pans. Oh. And as these bake, those blackberries are going to kind of break open a little bit. Mm. Nice. It just makes a Beautiful. We're going to place these in a preheated 325 degree oven. Okay. Uh, cook them till the custard's set, about 20 minutes. And just a nice little golden brown color on top. We'll pull them out, let them sit for a little while, unmold them, and enjoy. Perfect. As the tarts bake, dinner is served. Fresh heirloom tomato salad, 36 ounce certified Angus beef tomahawk ribeyes with a heap of steaming herb potatoes cabbage, and creamed Swiss chard. Amazing! Right from the farm to the table. And next, it's off to the bar. What a showcase. I love your bar. This Thank is uh, just a beautiful place here at Moore Farm. Believe it or not, while he wasn't chefing or farming, Josh somehow came up with the time to build this bar onto his farmhouse. From the ground up, all the way from the stained concrete floor to the ceiling, which is a mosaic of wine boxes Josh has collected over the years. There's a full-size pool table, all kinds of antiques, and even an old cash register behind the bar. And what else? A six-foot-long boa constrictor. It's safe to say Josh has it all. This is beautiful, too. The grappa custard tart, it's all set. The crust is nice and flaky. Uh, garnish it with some berries that we picked earlier, some fresh mint from the farm, and some whipped cream. And I'll tell you, those fresh berries, when I tasted them off the vine, I go, gosh, that's gonna make a great cocktail. I know exactly what I wanna do with this. Here's my uh, cocktail with your fresh berries right from the farm. I'm gonna muddle that up with just a little bit of uh, Finlandia mango vodka, so I'm gonna put that in there. And a couple of your fresh mint leaves. I'm using the mint and the berries just like you did with the dessert. I'll put that in there. Give this a good muddling, and I don't have to crush them up too much because they are fresh, they are delicious. Release the oil from the mint. Put a little bit of uh, just fresh lemonade goes in, just like summertime, you know, you gotta have the lemonade in there. And then I'll put a few ice cubes in here. Boom, that goes in. And then chef, I'm gonna give this a little shake. I'm give it a little bit more Finlandia vodka because I just muddled a little bit, so boom. Just about a couple ounces go in, just like that. Now we're gonna shake again to get that all mixed up. Here it is. Now you could strain this off, but I like the berries, berries and all, just kind of everything in there, in the glass, it's okay. Oh yeah, get that goodness in there, every bit of that. Beautiful color. Chef, cheers to you, my friend. Great job today, thank you for having us on your farm. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>